My name is Professor Robert McMillan, and I'm going to show you how to create a free Azure account for students and for teachers and other professors anywhere in the world. And we can do that by going to the website that you see here. And when we get here, and I'll put this URL in the comments, you'll click on the option to start free. So this is the special students section, but it works for teachers and professors as well. So once we click on that, we're going to need to confirm our account. Now we do that by putting in our .edu account. So if you don't have an edu account, then this isn't going to work for you. So you need to make sure that you are a member of a school, college, or university. After adding that in, I'll click Next, and now it's going to prompt me for my password. Next, it's going to prompt me to put in my phone numbers. This is going to need to be your cell phone number because it's going to be sending you texts. You could also use a regular landline if you wanted and have it call you, but that does take a lot longer. After typing in the verification code, it's confirming my account. And now I'm going to go ahead and put in my information. You will need to put in an address. However, you don't have to put in your personal address. You can put in the address of the school if you'd like. After entering this information, you can click on Sign Up. Now you can choose whether this experience was good or not. You can also put in some feedback and click Submit. And now it's logging me into the Azure dashboard for the first time. Now I have not entered any type of credit card information like you would in setting up a normal type of Azure account for a business. So you can see here that there's not going to be any charge. So there's going to be 366 days until my credit expires. I've got, it, it says $100 worth of credits, but that really doesn't mean anything here. You can just go ahead and start creating services. On the right hand side, you see all the different free services. Then you can see you can create Docker, you can create a learning model for machine learning, you can build and deploy your first website, all these different things. You can see free software, learning paths, and resources. Now, anything that doesn't say free, it's possible that it may end up costing money out of your credit. But once you run out of credits, then it will stop at that point and it will prompt you to enter a credit card if you'd like to continue. But as long as it is free, such as these free services over here, I'll click on Explore All. Then you can go ahead and use these up to 12 months without any issues. Now, at the end of the 12 months, it's certainly possible it may start all over again. I don't really know. This is a fairly new service. So I'm going to click to create a brand new Windows virtual machine. And you can see my subscription is Azure for Students. I can create a new resource group, which basically just allows me to create a project, for instance. Let's say it's for a specific class. Then you can go ahead and put in the name of that class. I'll call this one admin class. Now, you can't have any spaces. So I put an underscore there. And now I have the resource group created. Now it's time to add in my virtual machine name. I'll just call it admin VM for admin virtual machine. And now you need to choose whatever area is closest to you. You can see there's only a couple of options for me here. You might see different options in your area. Here you can choose the image that you'd like. Now you have multiple different options here for your image. You can choose Windows Server. I'll just go ahead and choose any one of these here. And you can ignore where it shows the price. We're not going to worry about that because I did not have to add anything in for credit card information. Now, here's where you want to put in your username. I put in WinAdmin, but you can put anything you'd like. And I put in the password as well. It wants you to confirm that. You can also allow public ports such as remote desktop to log in. You can go ahead and change that to none if you'd like as well to make it more secure. But I want to use it because I want to log in remotely. And so here's where we can add additional ports if we'd like. And I'm just going to choose the remote desktop port and choose Review and Create. If you have any errors, it'll point to a little red circle with an X through it on where the problem is, and then you can go ahead and fix it up. Now I'm going to go and click Create, and it's going to create my virtual machine. It will also give me a public IP address I can use to use Remote Desktop to log into it remotely. As the virtual machine is being created, you're going to see all these different resources. And that's because when you create a virtual machine, it's not just creating the VM. It's also creating a hard drive. It's creating an IP address. It's creating a network route, all these different things that you see here. 
Now it says that my deployment is complete. So I'll click on go to resource. And here you can see all the different parts that make my virtual machine work. I can click on networking, connect, Windows Admin Center, all these different things where I can choose to manage and make changes to my virtual machine. And here's the important part right here. This is my public IP address. I want to be able to connect to that public IP address. So I'll click on the connect button and it allows me to download the RDP file with that IP address already inside. So I'll go ahead and click on it. It's going to prompt me to connect to it. And now I'll click on more choices for my login. And I'll choose the win admin username and password that I created earlier. And now it's allowing me to log in. Now, when you first log in, you might see a blank screen for a little while. And then after that, it will go ahead and show the desktop like you would normally see in a remote desktop virtual machine. As long as you can see the mouse with the timer, then you know that everything is still working. So don't worry if it does take a minute or two. And now you can see my virtual machine is up and running. So I can go ahead and click on the start button. You may notice that it's a little bit slower than what you're used to. And that's because it doesn't give you a lot of resources since it is a free virtual machine. So for instance, I can open up PowerShell or anything else I'd like to do, and I can run some commands. I'm going to go ahead and ping Google's DNS address, which is 8.8.8.8. .8 and we'll take a look at the response, and which is a very good response at one millisecond. I'm back at my Azure portal, and I'm going to click on Home once again. And now we see a lot of different services here. So I'll click on more services. And there are literally hundreds of different services that you can choose to go ahead and configure with your account. Now, since many of these do cost money, you will be able to use up to $100 worth of credit on those. Otherwise, if you'd like to go back to the free area, just click on free at the top for searches, and then you can choose free services. And here are all the different free services that you can use. One of the other really popular things that you can do with this free account is create Azure Blob Storage. Blob Storage is a great way to store data in a disorganized way. What does that mean? Well, it's just basic file storage. You can use it for backup. You can use it for file copying. You can use it for all different kinds of things. Whereas organized file storage would be something, say, for a SQL server that needs tables and other things that allows you to organize that data. I'm going to choose the same subscription, of course, and resource group, although I can create a new one if I'd like. And now I need to give this storage account a name. Now, if you click on the little I here, you see that this name must be unique across all storage account names in Azure, which means that you need to create an account that nobody else has ever created. So one way to do this would be to put in your last name followed by anything you would like to put in there. So I'll put in Macmillan Data, since no one has ever used that before. And I'll go ahead and choose the region closest to me. Now I have a lot more different options than I did before. And since I'm on the West Coast, I'll choose West Central US. And now I can choose the type of storage I'd like. Now I'm going to go ahead and just choose Standard Storage and just choose a lot of the defaults here. And that's because going into all the details is beyond the scope of this video. But I have other videos that do go into details in these areas. And I'll click Create. Now, what can you do with this storage? Well, you can upload data directly to it. You can even map a drive letter to your computer. So you can drag and drop files right onto your Windows 10 or 11 or any other type of computer. And you can use this for a lot of different things, as I mentioned earlier. And it also includes a Storage Explorer. Storage Explorer is an application you can install on your own computer. And then you can drag and drop files both directions into that instead of just, say, choosing a mapped drive or having to log into the Azure account every time. And my creation is complete. I'll click on Go to Resource. And I'll choose Open and Explore. Choose Open Storage Explorer. Go ahead and open that link. And it installed Microsoft Azure Storage Explorer, which is a little application that sits on my computer. And here's the application opened up. 
And if I expand my storage accounts and blob containers, then you can see that information there. You've got file shares, queues, tables, and other things. Once again, going into storage and configuring it beyond just creating it is beyond the scope of this video, but I do have other videos in my Azure playlist. Azure for Students is a great way to learn Microsoft Azure without the need for a credit card, and it can get your IT career off to a great start.